Knowledge Wharton today is speaking with Wharton Finance Professor Richard Herring about some crucial bank regulations meant to be a first line of defense against another global financial meltdown. In a nutshell, uh, various countries on behalf of their banks have lobbied hard to water down the strong protections that are supposed to prevent another financial crisis. In the last crisis, uh, it was a lack of liquidity that led to uh, the quickly escalating problems that we saw. So the proposed rules by the Basel Committee involve issues such as do banks have enough liquidity on hand uh, in a form that they can get at fast in an emergency? In other words, how liquid are reserves? And if the liquidity rules uh, have to be relaxed, which is what countries are lobbying for on behalf of their banks, then where does that leave us on the issue of too big to fail or lender of last resort issues? So Professor Herring, you're also co-chair of something called the uh, Financial, the Shadow Financial Regulatory Committee. Could you start by explaining briefly what that is and then tell us about the committee's views on, on how there's this attempt to water down the new rules meant to prevent another meltdown? Uh, the uh, emphasis should be on the shadow part of the title because, in fact, it is completely non-official. It's a group of uh, former regulators, uh, academics, um, and lawyers who meet four times a year in Washington to review recent financial proposals and ideas for new regulation. Uh, each meeting is followed by a press conference where we release statements that uh, reflect our group view on a particular proposal or a direction we think financial regulation should take. The one we're discussing today is an attempt by the Basel Committee, um, which represents the uh, supervisors of, well, now it's really the group of 20 uh, and growing, but the key bank supervisors in the world to set in place regulations that will prevent another banking crisis. And I think you're right. It stems from the perception that the cause of the last crisis was illiquidity. Um, I would say that's more proximate than fundamental. Uh, in fact, the real problem was that many banks had uh, very, very weak asset positions, and once the market found out, it led to liquidity problems. But nonetheless, that's where it did show up. So the response of the Basel Committee was to establish two kinds of liquidity ratios. Um, one of them has sort of fallen by the wayside because people are very worried that it would reduce the role of banks in, in intermediation altogether. But the other, which is called um, the um, short-term liquidity ratio, is going forward. Uh, it's been revised now at least twice and probably will, will be revised again before it uh, is written into law. Uh, Governor Bernanke has said that the U.S. will be revising it before it actually puts it into law. The idea behind it was, um, I think, fairly straightforward. Um, if you're worried that banks don't have enough liquidity, then you define high-quality liquidity, that is, liquidity that can be turned into cash for meeting uh, demands for cash uh, immediately at no cost, relative to some scale variable. And the scale variable they chose was the amount of outflow a bank might have to meet over a 30-day stress period. Now, at that level, it's very clear and makes some kind of sense. But the problem began when the politics started, because the European banks in particular realized that they were going to be in a very difficult situation. So high-quality liquidity got expanded to include all sorts of things that I think we'd all be fairly skeptical were high-quality at all. Equity with a haircut. Um, some corporate bonds, even some mortgages, things that are really not remotely uh, sure liquidity in all market situations. And remember, we're looking at a stress situation, so it really doesn't make sense to use things that are normally pretty liquid. So liquidity should be cash and maybe something a little bit well, less it, than cash? It's the maybe that gets you into trouble. Now, in the U.S., we'd probably say cash plus treasury bills. But if you're a Greek bank, that's really not going to be very helpful. So uh, the committee, I think, came down to the view that cash was the one thing that we could measure with certainty that was always liquid in all situations and would give you an unambiguous indicator. Uh, then there were problems with regard to the denominator. How much stress do we want to think about? Do we want to worry about something as stressful as what happened during the crisis? Uh, well, that became a fudge. At first, they used fairly extraordinary, uh, pretty stressful 
uh, assumptions to figure out that amount. Equal, equal to what the last crisis well, produced? Well, it, it wasn't that clean. It would have been nicer if they had actually had some empirical evidence uh -huh. to hang it on. But it was, it was a fairly extreme assumption. And then they began to water it down. And they watered it down by saying, gee, how much of each liability is likely to, out, to flow out? And it went from something that was very stressful for something that was more or less an ordinary day. It was really, uh, so it's turned out to be a mishmash that, that really doesn't help uh, outsiders understand the liquidity position of banks and really is just another very confusing way to uh, look at a bank because you can't compare it across banks since you're using very different rules and it all depends on the composition of a bank's um, uh, assets and its liabilities. Um, our suggestion was to make it something much more straightforward, uh, to use cash in the numerator, and in the denominator, make an assumption that the bank can't roll over any of its liabilities. That's extreme, but the answer to that uh, fraction will tell you the number of days the bank could keep going without relying on the market. Now, in the future, regulators may or may not want to put a, a, a limit or a minimum on that number of days, but at least in the meanwhile, markets would be able to read it in a way that was comparable across banks.